everyone, Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Tonight I'm talking about gluten and depression, and uh, I've talked about this topic many times in the past, and as I'm doing this depression series, it's just always good to circle back to this. I do not feel that gluten is the sole cause of depression in no way, shape, or form, but I do think it may contribute to depressive symptoms in some people. So I'm going to talk about that. Uh, the disclaimer is that none of this is medical advice. Discuss all of it with your doctor, your physician, your healthcare provider. Um, talk to them about it. These are just ideas. So I'm going to show this in the stream. Hmm. Weird. I'd show it in the stream. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Let me see. Give me a second. All right, so it looks like my stream is not working as well. So I'm just going to kind of go off uh, memory <clears throat> and talk about this. So gluten sensitivity gained a lot of attention around the year 2008, 2010, particularly. Uh, by 2014, about 100 million Americans had tried going on a diet free of gluten. This was highly popularized by um, notable figures, people in the media, Hollywood celebrities, athletes, saying they went gluten-free and they felt better. So a lot of people start, started going gluten-free, trying to lose weight or trying to help their health ailments. Um, this prompted researchers to say, well, we know that one in a thousand people have celiac disease, which at that point in time was much more common than the previous statistics. Um, there are questions, has the gluten molecule changed? What is gluten? Gluten is in wheat, barley, oats, and riots, the protein that is indigestible. <clears throat> so they thought maybe with the way we're changing our agriculture, uh, we may have different ways of uh, processing that. And so it's harder to digest. And that's why celiac disease is so much more common, but it's only one in a hundred people. So how can all these people be going on gluten-free diets and saying they feel better? It was probably kind of annoying to some doctors to hear people rave about going gluten-free. So then there's this um, gentleman by the name of Peter Gibson, I believe, <clears throat> he's an Australian researcher, and he was actually one of the key people who put on the map this diagnosis of non-celiac gluten sensitivity. What is celiac disease? That's the autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks the intestinal lining. I've done a video on it. Go back and watch it. And it's a very severe autoimmune disease, lots of times associated with other neurological problems, maybe other endocrine endocrine problems involving the endocrine system. And uh, so anyways, that's what celiac disease is. It's literally where your intestinal lining, which has like basically villi that are really long, become blunted. There's a lot of inflammation in the intestinal lining and uh, there's a genetic predisposition and there's lots of times nutrient malabsorption. So it's a whole thing unto itself. But then he identified this condition called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And non-celiac gluten sensitivity, when they started studying it, they thought that maybe around 10 to 15% of the population may have non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So that's pretty high. Um, and so then he did further studies and he did this study where he had people who thought they had a gluten sensitivity consume food that they didn't know was in it. And uh, basically uh, they compared them to controls and uh, they gave them different types of meals for two week periods. One was high in gluten, one was gluten free, one was high in gluten and dairy, if I remember correctly. So in doing this, he found that digestive symptoms, digestive symptoms, sorry, um, are not related to gluten consumption. That's what he found. There are other studies that rebut that and show people who feel they have a gluten sensitivity do have more digestive symptoms. Um, but nonetheless, uh, this doctor um, basically said that gluten sensitivity does not directly relate to digestive symptoms. And probably when someone consumes gluten, they're having a reaction to the FODMAP content which is the carbohydrate content of the wheat molecules, basically, of the wheat uh, itself. And that's why they're having symptoms of bloating or cramping or something like that. However, and that got a lot of media attention. 
And then, however, he repeated the study and he didn't look at digestive symptoms. He looked at neurological symptoms. He looked at affective symptoms. So depression, anxiety, things of that nature. And what he found was that there was a statistically significant link between gluten consumption itself, not gluten and dairy, but gluten, and someone feeling worse who had a gluten sensitivity. So he deemed that a lot of people who feel worse when they eat gluten, it's actually that they're having depressive symptoms. So keep in mind, we think that around 10 to 15% of the population may have a gluten sensitivity. So those individuals, out of anything, you would think they are more likely to have digestive symptoms. They're actually, in fact, more likely to have depressive symptoms. And if you watch on Facebook, uh, the, the de-stress broadcast we did this week, de-stress part four, I kind of drew like a sinkhole to metaphorically demonstrate that depression is not a unifactorial thing for a lot of people. It's multifactorial. As I've said in many other broadcasts, the physiology of depression is really the fear center becoming enlarged in the brain, the memory area shrinking. Because the fear center enlarges, then uh, we produce high levels of cortisol. The high cortisol then feeds back and literally damages the good parts of our brain, including the memory area. And that becomes the physiology of depression, antidepressants, um, the ones that are commonly used as a first line therapy, I should say it that way, grow new brain cells in the memory area, that's how they work. So that's the physiology of depression, but so many things can contribute between, if you're a guy, if your testosterone's low, if you're female, if your estrogen and progesterone are low, your B vitamin status, your ability to take folic acid from your diet and make it active, um, your history of childhood trauma or not, your BDNF gene profile, which stands for brain-derived neurotrophic factor, um, and there are, there are others, your, how much fat tissue you have can contribute to depression. There's so many, your gut bacteria certainly can contribute to depression. So it's very multifactorial and gluten seems to be an important factor for some. So, uh, I think it's just good that you have this information again, in no way do I think gluten's the sole cause of depression, but I think it may be an issue for some people and something worth looking at. And the standard way to test if you have non-celiac gluten sensitivity is literally just to go on a gluten-free diet for, I believe, depends on who you look at, two to four weeks, and then reintroduce gluten and see how you feel. And if you feel a lot worse, then that may mean that you have a gluten sensitivity. The blood testing is not always fantastic for gluten sensitivity. So that's it. Tonight, a short talk, Friday night. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And um, gosh, if you have any questions, email us at info at gatesbrainhealth.com. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, anyways, my stream wasn't working as well tonight. So info at gatesbrainhealth.com. Okay, have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.